A little while ago, I built this thing. It's a disc with 40 magnets arranged around the rim, with the north pole of every second one facing upwards. It was an experiment to see how effective it might be at heating water if it was connected to a large windmill. Now, I don't have a large windmill yet, so I used my pillar drill as a stand-in. And yes, it did heat up non-ferrous metals just by holding them close to the rotating magnets, a phenomenon called induction. The alternating magnetic flux causes the metal to heat up without any direct physical contact. It's really very interesting, isn't it? So the metal got hot and that heated up the water inside it and the faster the magnets spun round, the faster the metal heated which is all very exciting. But in a real windmill setup, as I hope to build, really fast spinning parts could be potentially dangerous and of course they'll wear out. So I went back to the suppliers of the magnets, firstformagnets.com, and they kindly sent me a few more magnets so I could build this thing, my absolutely huge spinning magnet induction heater. How cool is that? First for magnets.com have all sorts of magnets. I'll put a link to them in the description. Thank you very much to them too. Now there are 100 neodymium magnets in total set in a sheet of MDF. So now each revolution of the new disc moves 100 magnets past any given point on the rim each time. So without increasing the RPM, the number of flux flips jumps by 250%. All right then, so that's what will happen, but how will it affect the outcome? That's the exciting experiment that I'm setting up here. I made all the holes just a little bigger than the last time because I wanted to leave room to set each magnet in some sort of waterproof seal because they don't like water at all. And I started with varnish because it's runny enough to soak in. and then spent an afternoon wrestling with the magnets. They are vicious little things. If you try something similar, be very careful, okay? They all want to stick together and they don't want to be separated at all. They will hop out of their little holes and fly across the board to get back to their friends. And they are very strong and incredibly fast. So I came out scarred and bloodied. Um, and a couple of magnets were broken, ended up, but in the end, they are all where I wanted them to be. So I had to hold them all down individually while the resin under them went off. Then I added more resin, lots more resin to hold them in permanently and properly. I also managed to glue the disc onto the wheel hub, <laughs> which wasn't really the plan at all. I don't know how that happened. Thank you, Ashley. There's lots of weight in the disc now, which means it takes a long time to spin up to speed and a long time to slow down again. Inertia, how are you? 
That's a good thing, I think, probably. And this is my new arm bracket with hinge, so I can support the heating element at whatever height works best. It's quite a solid and lumpy, heavy bracket, because I don't want anything coming adrift near this thing once it's going. I varnished the whole thing a couple more times, hoping it will be damp resistant at least. I even balanced the disc as best as I could, just adding a little weight on the lighter side till it stopped at random places instead of in the same place each time. Now, there was a lot of discussion on the best sort of heating element to use. This time, I'm trying a long length of one inch copper pipe, mostly because I had it already. I hope it's big enough so the water isn't restricted inside. Oh, kinky, <laughs> but not too bad. And it certainly works, the water gets warm inside. Now it's hard to know how well it's going to work until the whole system is made. So here's a bucket. With tank fittings added. with three quarter inch plastic pipes connecting everything together. Hung from the ceiling. Obviously, the idea is that the cold water at the bottom of the circuit will be drawn up to replace the heated water over the magnets because that heated water should rise up through the pipe to the bucket where it should stratify into layers with the warmest at the top. The coolest should be sucked slowly back down the other pipe. So let's try it, shall we? The water started at 13 degrees Celsius. And I put five liters into the system and spun up the disc. Now, you will notice immediately that there is no insulation anywhere, and I think that's the big factor in what happened. The temperature rose very quickly, which was good. After all, that's quite a bit of water to heat up. But the rise in temperature peaked very quickly too. So it only rose about 10 degrees in about 10 minutes. But then, I guess it was cooling down just as fast as it was being heated up. Heat was being radiated off the whole system, so it didn't get any hotter. Obviously, the next step is to wrap everything up in a woolly jumper of sorts and try to retain as much heat as possible. But it took such a long time to get this far, <laughs> I thought I'd show you the progress so far and hope that some of you will have some bright suggestions on the next steps because it's getting quite close now and it's all kind of fun, isn't it? Yes, Tim. <laughs>